In this lesson, you will review what similar and congruent mean, learn the three geometry transformations, apply transformations to compare polygons to determine similarity or congruence, and distinguish when shapes are congruent, similar, or both. Let's begin. First, let's recall that two geometric shapes are similar if they have the same shape but are different in size. Congruent objects are also similar, but similar objects are not congruent. Here we have two isosceles triangles, one with sides twice as long as the other. Are they similar? To determine if they are similar, you have to check their interior angles to see if they are the same in both isosceles triangles. Recall that the equal sides of an isosceles triangle are called legs. In this case, the corresponding angles between the legs and third sides are congruent at 71 degrees. Next, you have to compare corresponding sides to see if they maintain the same ratio. Notice the left triangle has two legs 15 centimeters long and a third side 10 centimeters long. The right triangle has 30 centimeters legs and a 20 centimeters third side. If the ratio of one side and one leg of the left-hand triangle is the same ratio as the corresponding side and leg of the right-hand triangle, they are proportional to each other, so they are similar. Are these ratios the same? 10 by 15 equal 20 by 30. Both of these fractions simplify down to 2 by 3. So the answer is yes. The proportions of the two isosceles triangles are the same, so the two triangles are similar. Next, let's talk about being congruent. Polygons or any geometric shapes are congruent if they are the same size and shape. Two equilateral triangles, each with one side 90 meters long, are congruent. Two 6-inch circles are also congruent. In order to determine if geometric shapes are congruent, we need to learn about transformations. Geometry transformations are movements of two-dimensional shapes in two dimensions or within their plane, like restricted game pieces on a game board. You can move two-dimensional shapes in only three ways. Number one, rotation. Shapes are rotated or turned around an axis. Number two, reflection. Shapes are flipped across an imaginary line to make mirror images. Number three, translation. Shapes are slid across the plane. You use all these concepts in everyday life. Let's check each out separately, starting with rotation. The scalene triangle on the left and the scalene triangle on the right are actually similar, but the one on the right has been rotated to stand on its shortest side. To see if the two triangles are similar, you first have to get them both in the same direction or orientation. You do this by rotating or turning one shape to align with the other. Such a transformation is called a rotation. Next we have reflection. With regular polygons, you cannot tell if a figure has been reflected, since all sides are equal and all angles are equal. With some irregular polygons, some reflections leave you with an identical shape, but most irregular polygons will look very different once you reflect them or flip them. Here are two long, narrow rectangles. They are not regular quadrilaterals, so you can easily see that two sides are much longer than the other side. Can you tell if one rectangle is a reflection of the other? The answer is no, you cannot. Because when you reflect this rectangle either horizontally or vertically, the rectangle appears the same. Now look at this irregular trapezoid with two interior angles forming right angles. It is called a right trapezoid because of those two right angles. If we imagine a vertical line to the right of the shape, we can flip or reflect the shape across that line. Now the short side of the newly placed trapezoid is facing the corresponding short side of the original. The new trapezoid is reflected. The image is a reflection. Lastly, we have translations. Translating a shape means moving it around on the plane the shape is in without changing its orientation. In other words, you slide it. You do not rotate it. 
Translations are handy in bringing two shapes together to evaluate to see if they are similar or not because when they are far apart, you may have a hard time comparing corresponding parts. Time for an example. Here are two rectangles, spaced far apart and in different orientations. Rectangle bath has long sides of 30 yards and short sides of 21 yards. Muck has long sides of 40 yards and short sides of 28 yards. You need not worry about corresponding interior angles, they are all 90 degrees. Notice rectangle muck is bigger than bath, which means the two rectangles cannot be congruent because they are oriented in different ways. You cannot easily tell if they are similar. What will you do? If you said you would rotate and then translate the two rectangles, or the other way around, then you are correct. Once you get them near each other and in the same orientation on the page, you can compare the two using corresponding parts. Bath's long side compared to Muck's long side is 30 by 40. Bath's short side compared to Muck's short side is 21 by 28. Are those two ratios the same? Yes, because they both simplify to 3 by 4 so the two rectangles are similar to each other. Now that you have worked through this lesson, you have recalled what similar and congruent mean, and learn the three geometry transformations, which are rotation, reflection, and translation. You also know that similar shapes differ in size only, and congruent shapes have congruent interior angles and congruent lengths of sides. You also learn that congruent shapes are also similar, but not all similar shapes are congruent.